theme parks can be found in nearly every corner of the globe. No matter where you are, the idea of a theme park or amusement park is the same. A collection of huge roller coasters, spinning rides, and tempting food stalls. The world's best theme parks all have one thing in common, however. It's not the rides or the exhaustingly long queues. It's this, this, and this. Nature. The trees, plants, and vegetation, the water, lakes, and streams. Nature. Now, nature probably isn't the first thing to come to your mind when you think about theme parks. But it really should be. Nature isn't just a nice to have. It has an overwhelmingly positive impact on the average experience of theme park goers, like yourselves, and despite that, most theme parks aren't taking advantage of it. So, let's explore theme parks and nature. Why does this, nature, only seem to appear at the world's best theme parks? Let's start with the most obvious integration of nature in a theme park setting. Nature enhances design. It's not a surprise that nature is integral to many of the best-themed experiences across the world's amusement parks. Nature is great at convincing you you're elsewhere. An obvious example is the many Big Thunder Mountain-esque rides around the world. Most emulate the American Southwest. How? Rockwork. Lots and lots of rockwork. They all feature rock formations synonymous with this region of the world. Instantly, your brain knows the vibe the park is going for, a kind of Wild West mining town style. You don't need to see the buildings or even the ride vehicle to get the idea the rocks are enough. But they're not real. This is theme park design emulating nature. That's not a bad thing, but it's not the real deal. What is real are the trees, the plants, the shrubbery around the ride, and the general area. These are all synonymous with the theme too. It's vegetation local to that area of the world and your brain already knows. You look at the huge rockwork structures to understand the theme, but it's the detail of the plants that sells you the idea. Nature-enhanced theme park design extends far outside of your Big Thunder Mountains. The rather nature-deprived Disney Hollywood Studios uses a few palm trees to sell the idea that you're in California while walking down Hollywood Boulevard. It's simple, but the subtle change against the rest of the park helps to establish that difference. While the fairy tale forest at the Efteling is exactly that, a forest. Hidden amongst it is a collection of animated scenes from many European folktales. Your brain instantly associates the fairy tale like qualities of a cobblestone path in the middle of a dense forest with exactly that, fairy tales. The talking tree probably helps with that too, I guess. No theme park takes the idea of nature-enhanced design further than Disney Animal Kingdom. The entire zoo theme park hybrid is themed around the natural environment and animal conservation. Unsurprisingly, this means the place is littered with nature. A variety of indigenous palm tree species and a delightful sausage tree live within the African section of the park, while surrounding Expedition Everest and the park's Asia-inspired land you can find a forest of bamboo trees and other native plant life. Again, the buildings and landscapes sell the idea of the theme, but it's the nature that creates the authentic feeling. Nature is more than just genuine theming, however. It has the potential to provide you with real benefits. Nature improves experiences. Have you ever visited an amusement park or theme park on a hot summer's day? Well, I'm sure you're well aware of what this feels like. What about this instead? How does that feel? Yeah, one is an orphan experience and the other tolerable. Why? Shade. Trees and vegetation provide protection from the sun, shading areas from intense heat. They also naturally release water vapor into the surrounding area, cooling the air and lowering the temperature. A study in the UK saw a 5 degrees Celsius reduction in peak temperatures during a heat wave thanks to the nearby trees. That's the difference between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius or 95 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes unbearably hot be actually bearably hot. Well, just. Vegetation is great at reducing noise too. Trees, plants and shrubs deflect, absorb and refract sound waves. This makes them great natural sound buffers, reducing noise levels from one area to the next. Vegetation is also a natural absorber of air pollution. 
Not only does it absorb CO2 from the atmosphere, replacing it with oxygen, but it also absorbs particulate matter too. That's tiny particles particularly harmful to humans. They're produced by a whole host of things, including fires, vehicles, and even construction sites. Particulate matter sticks to the leaves of some plants, reducing their concentration and improving air quality. Many theme parks around the world are already making the most of the nature available to them. Places like Alton Towers in the UK and the Efteling in the Netherlands both heavily embrace nature. You'll find trees, shrubs, lakes and other natural spaces scattered around each. This itself is rewarded with increased biodiversity. The Efteling in particular encourages wildlife. For example, bird feeders are placed around the park to create a better habitat for the local animals. The natural environment has a positive effect on us too. Spending time in nature improves our mental health and has an instinctive calming effect. At times, theme parks are busy, high energy, crowded places. Waiting for hours in tight queues is stressful at the best of times. Nature provides the exact opposite sensation, a moment of peace, a respite from the chaos. The typical amusement park midway only exaggerates the problem. Concrete and asphalt are great absorbers of heat, storing it over time and releasing it back into the air. Large areas of exposed midway are hot, loud and unpleasant places to be. Trees, plants and other vegetation help to break up the landscape, providing cooler, quieter and healthier spaces. Again, would you prefer to walk around this theme park or this one? Here, the final point begins to make sense. Nature is an attraction. Outside of theme parks, nature itself is an attraction. People across the world flock to sites of natural beauty. Pristine vistas, dazzling waterfalls, epic rock formations and ancient forests. Long story short, we have a natural affinity towards nature. We're drawn to it. We enjoy visiting it. We find delight in experiencing it. Often, it feels like an otherworldly experience, allowing us to escape the chaos and chore of our everyday lives. This, in a nutshell, is the exact same experience theme parks are offering. A sense of escapism. Why live in the real world when you can ride roller coasters, get immersed in incredible rides, and enjoy good food? Over time, we're seeing more theme parks take advantage of the intrinsic sense of awe that nature provides. At Epcot's Journey of Water, nature is the attraction. There, you interact with water, learn about the water cycle, get lost in the plant-rich environment, and enjoy the small slice of Epcot set up to emulate the world of Moana. There are no rides, you don't board anything, you simply enjoy walking around a partially fake natural environment. At this point, we are well aware of the nature-enhanced design of Animal Kingdom. But there's one particular area of the park that takes nature to the extreme. In Pandora, World of Avatar, nature is the attraction. You're instantly met with an extraordinary sight, huge floating islands. Each one is equipped with a plethora of plants, vines and other wildlife, not to mention the waterfalls. You quickly get lost in the colorful world built from a mixture of real plant life and alien plant life. Half of Pandora is obviously not real, but it all feels natural. It's easily one of the most true to life and real feeling theme park areas in the world. It's so easily immersive because we like nature. So even if you don't like Avatar, you'll like Pandora. It simply feels incredibly genuine. That's by design. First, you'd never know that there were any rides. There's two, and they've both been hidden incredibly well amongst the multicolored greenery. Second, designers chose to omit pretty much all Disney-related imagery. There's no Mickey Mouse or even the over-the-top entrance portals. It's just you and nature. Disney is not the only theme park embracing this ideology. Universal Studios has its fair share of big theme parks too. In fact, they're building a brand new one in Orlando, Universal Epic Universe. At the very center of this one-of-a-kind attraction is Celestial Park, a world between worlds connecting the park's four themed areas. Celestial Park is unlike most central theme park hubs. It's full of trees, plants and vegetation, as well as water, lakes and streams. This is no accident. 
Adam Rivest, the person in charge of Celestial Park's design, said, We've made a conscious effort to put the park back into theme park and made sure not to design it with lots of concrete and asphalt streets. Here, the area aims to emulate that of a traditional park, a space for people to gather, socialize and connect. You're much more likely to rest and spend time in natural spaces compared to open, exposed, built-up ones. When it comes to theme park design, this is genius. Celestial Park needs to be able to absorb huge quantities of guests coming and going. By making the park's hub an attraction in its own right, it'll soak up guests. They'll take the time to enjoy the nature, providing a moment of relaxation in what is usually a busy and often chaotic environment. Animal Kingdom's Pandora and Epic Universe's Celestial Park are great examples of what happens when you bring all three of these points together. They're great examples of following a design philosophy where nature is fundamental to the idea and form of a theme park area. It's not an afterthought poorly tacked on, it's a core part of the design, helping to improve the area by making it more detailed, more enjoyable, and more immersive. We, as people, have an inherent inclination to affiliate with nature, an instinctive positive relationship with it. The implementation of nature in a theme park setting doesn't even have to be that grand. It just requires a bit of thought. Theme parks need to ask the question, how do we make the most of nature? Whether that's the nature already available to them, or investing and building new rides or lands inspired by the natural environment. By heavily embracing nature, Pandora at Animal Kingdom and even Alton Towers and the Efteling are all rewarded with this whimsical, almost magical feeling. It's something you can't quite put your finger on but goes beyond your standard amusement park vibe. By taking advantage of nature, they'll further the sense of escapism, improving the experience of the average guest. So, with that in mind, let's do a bit of an experiment. Picture some of your favorite theme parks. Can you see nature built into their design? I personally gravitate towards parks that feature nature heavily throughout, places like Animal Kingdom, the Efteling, and Alton Towers. Each has a natural feel-good factor about it. I simply feel more relaxed, happy, and energized. What about your least favorite theme parks? What do they look like? One of my least favorite theme parks to experience is Disney Hollywood Studios. Why? Because it's nearly completely void of nature. The built-up setting of the park makes it feel busier and exaggerates the feeling of chaos. Despite the great rides, I genuinely think it's the most stressed I've been in a theme park ever. We're able to experience bland, boring, built-up landscapes in cities during our daily lives. Why would you want the same during a day out, a time that's meant to be for enjoyment and happiness? And that's the conclusion. Theme parks are places of enjoyment, escapism, and fun. Nature enhances, improves, and enables those experiences even further. Nature doesn't just appear in the world's best theme parks. Nature makes a theme park one of the world's best. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next time.